Good morning, One Church. It is that time of year again where we do our year in review. Um, every year we have done it slightly different. The first time Michelle and I were in, on the road with two children, driving around, highlighting everything. Yep. Last year it was me and Darren and Mitch looking back and 
thinking about it, and now we have changed up. I think the next one, I'll sit out, because you've each had one off. So I'll sit out, and no. you guys can... No. No. <laughs> no. I think that's a great idea. No. No. I think no. Michelle on her own would be perfect. Um, no. There we go. No, I'm I'm okay. You were just saying before we started... How much I love the camera. Exactly. Yes. How much you yeah, love I the sure camera. love it. I love it. So, uh, so yeah, this is a little bit different. Um, we will have small guests every once in a while because we did not able to get a babysitter while we were doing this. <laughs> so uh, you may get some impromptu off the screen ad libs from our children, um, but that just adds to the family feel of One Church. Uh, so we're start off by talking about some of the highlights of last year. What were the good things that happened in 2022 that uh, we want to celebrate? Okay, I was trying to think, like I was trying to figure this out before we started this, but COVID was still, like we were just finishing up COVID in February, right? Or March. Last year. Last year. So we've been open. Yeah. I couldn't, anyways, sorry. I'm like yeah. trail. I, it's well, also, it wasn't, it was a, impacting us still. Yeah. Because we still had uh, events that happened that were yeah. impacted with people being sick and mm -hmm. they're testing positive. So yeah, it was still, yeah. still having an effect on us. But yeah, actually meeting on Sundays, it's hard to believe it's been over a know, year. Right? So, but yeah, but it was last year, I think it was just last year, where you, me, and Mitch did the Skype service, right? Yes. So like we, oh, we were right. still doing yeah. things because of sickness and COVID yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, uh, um, and so, yeah. like we were so lucky that the mission trip was able to go, like yeah, mm. right. So we were, <laughs> all the crazy stuff that happened. We didn't change time. We still did a mission yeah. trip last year. There's only four people went, but I mean it was still good. Yeah. I still laugh about the fact that because well that was the big COVID thing, right? <laughs> so we had like Jamie and Kara, right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, Clay and Mary. But of course, we couldn't have one of those couple sets left behind. We had yeah. one of each. One of each family. <laughs> Test positive. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think that they were really, really that upset to spend that extra no week, week and a half in Mexico. Yeah. I think they kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. A word from the wise, though: don't drink orange juice before you take your <laughs> test. Apparently, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Right. That was the thing. The two that didn't drink. Cool yeah. orange juice got to come back. So, yeah. uh, no man, but it was cool to see God's hand in that and how yeah. like God orchestrated them to be able to go back to the place and do one more week. Yeah. So, well, and I think they actually had, um, from talking to Jamie that it was quite an impactful week for them as well. Mm -hmm. The things that they experienced on that second week was, yeah. um, more, more God inspired, more, hand of God in it and it was really important to them um, so mm -hmm. he works whatever way he wants to work right he really does yep so yeah it was an uh, interesting time that was really cool um, while Michelle is dealing with children I, the highlight that isn't really necessarily an event but just like the beginning when we had our council meeting uh, just a couple of weeks ago uh, we were setting some goals for 2023 and we were trying to set uh, first time guest goal and so the first goal we set was 50 and then clay our faithful greeter went out and grabbed a book and realized that we had we hit 50 first time guests last year yeah. so then we set a 75 well then clay's going through the book and he's like well but i didn't count anyone who's now regularly attending well no if they're first time so we hit a 75 goal and all of a sudden we realized we'd hit 75 last year so we had 75 first time guests last year which is crazy yeah. like super exciting right yeah so i set a goal of 100 but then i was going through and he's like okay so if we had 75 75 first time guests and 25 of them are regularly attending like that's a big win for us yes it is because um well with general conference we were looking at uh, attend like in invitation and stuff, right? And the it goes down by sevens. We have one in seven 
if you put out 700 invitations, if you have 100 people come back, that was a success, right, for that church. And then from the 700, that 100 first time guests, you go down by, that's 24 that may come back a second time. That may come back a second time, right? Yeah. We had 75 and 25 of them have consistently come back on our, that's huge. Yes. And I think even for like, cause even our welcome packets that we had, like we like went through them and by, I think it was before Halloween, I had to make up another batch and like we're low on them too. So even just that, like you can tell that people are coming and we're getting mm -hmm. to know them. And just hearing the little stories from the people who came, like the, yeah, yeah just recently somebody was just like, I quite enjoyed coming and just mm -hmm. being able, that warm welcome like is huge for people, so. Well, even in Redbirds, we were shocked yeah. once we started counting up guests. Um, yeah. We're, we're a smaller congregation we have, um, but until you actually think back on the whole year and everyone that did show up as a guest and, mm -hmm. and um, they were welcomed and, and we had to have had a chance to impact have people in in the in the community yeah. mm -hmm. but because we're smaller we just kind of assume so you actually sit and think and count mm -hmm. yeah we actually had i think it was 12 or yeah 15 guests yeah. throughout the year as well so mm -hmm. and some surprising people leading worship right like yes. people that are not normally churchgoers or yet like church from our church, right? They came and helped out, so that was cool too. Yeah, we had um, a music teacher bring uh, his students in to, they have to perform in yeah. front of people, so they they came and did worship at our church. It was, <laughs> it was great because not only did it impact those kids that came to sing, but their families came to watch their children. Yeah. And so the exposure was, it was pretty great, so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a huge win for you guys. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so along with that, so I, so if everyone's anyone wondering why we continue to keep attendance, it's this kind of stuff that we want to be able to go back and say, celebrate these big wins that we had. So I discovered in Alvanto that I can go back and I can figure out how many times everybody has attended and all that fun stuff. Um, guys, tell them Michelle this. Guess who? So I'm king. I have attended church the most, which is good. I That's wonder a good, why. That's a good, good thing. Um, you'll never guess who number two is. Not me. I know that. No, nope, it's not <laughs> Michelle. And because you guys didn't record Facebook. As much, yeah. Because um, we were having so, no elemental problems. Yeah. So Red Warriors, we don't even have those numbers. So I'm, I'm probably about the same as Matt. That <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Um, number two in attendance, guess who, take a wild guess. <laughs> Clay? Clay's that number was three, actually. Oh, okay. Clay so Wobbins number guess. three. Lyndon Andrew is number two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone brings it. Lyndon. Yeah, <laughs> Lyndon is always here. So. She's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. So we should get her like a, a trophy or something. <laughs> yeah, <we should. laughs> oh man. <clears throat> um anyways what else what other uh... i love that we were able to have the ladies gala like at first mm. i didn't know if it would come together or if we could even do it but then the fact of how little things just kept coming together for that like this akash family coming and with their whole family on stage i wasn't sure if our stage was big enough but it all worked out and mm. the ladies had a blast and like there was ladies here that i have never even met even just going to through town to go shopping or anything I, there was new faces and there was i think close to 50 of us i can't remember but yeah. That was even just so fun to just relax, unwind, hear the gospel, hear their testimonies and how they wrote songs. And yeah, it was just a refreshing night. I realize in our numbers, like we didn't include ladies no. in our number. No, so we, <laughs> we got another goal now because we blew that one out of the water. Well, and just uh, one of the things that highlights for me is I'm looking here and we had a wedding this spring and just how well we flow with unexpected surprises. It was totally. a bit of a change, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. because of our facilities, we were able to uh, stream the wedding. So people who couldn't <coughs> attend were able to then yeah. be able to come and, or to watch the service online. That was uh, quite amazing. And lots of things that we've planned on the year before that we suddenly get to, to uh, transition 
into. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of things that have come up and we just, we fill the need as, as it comes. And yeah. it's been a blessing, I believe. Oh, that streaming thing has become so huge even. So we had the, that community Christmas thing at the United Church, which we were, I was able to speak at and got to be a part of. And um, they were saying that they would be willing to host it in other places. And, you know, I said, well, we, we'd love to host it because there's probably people that want to come out, especially like a night like we had on Sunday was so cold. Like, mm -hmm. and I, the, the opportunity to stream it, right? To say, hey, if you can't yeah. come, you could actually go here, watch it. And uh, I think that's just something that we can do, we can offer that. And it's very exciting to be able to to reach one of the one of the goals we set the year before was to to be community mm -hmm. focused and to be able to partner with other uh, denominations and be able to mm -hmm. um, work collaboratively on events and get reach out people and use our streaming services and that sort of thing to and it's not the only uh, thing that we've used it for we've had other events streamed the wedding there was a few things that went on so. Um, yeah, it's amazing how God's given us this facility and we're able to, mm -hmm. to use it. Well, even so. KLBC consistently getting to mm -hmm. do their live stream here. And it's just, it's just awesome to be able to offer that. Um, big highlight from the year, which is crazy to say in light of everything that was around it, but like, like Brian, Kinnett being able to share, right? Yes. Like we, we were so close to losing Brian and everything that was going on there. And then for the way that God was able to turn that around and it is now like our most watched video. Yeah. It was like the biggest attended Sunday we've had. Like it was just um, the power of story, but the power of that story. Yeah, exactly. And to be able to watch Brian be able to help um, others without without actually being physical, just, just by sharing a story. and. And being able to uh, to put a face to some some of the issues that he went through, and like I said it's still on Facebook. It's still going around. Everyone, I still see it come up on my feed all the time, mm -hmm. and it's an amazing, impactful story. So, um, if you haven't had a chance, go check that out. That was something that was mm -hmm. um, something that was incredible. Oh yeah, and something that we want to make. I trying to find ways to make them more readily available on the website even, right? Mm -hmm. I want people to be able to find it and yeah. watch it. And so, yeah. Another thing too is like, even as a community going out and I mean, this is the first time we were able to, to do barbecues, go half Manhattan Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, the doors were opened, so to speak. And so um, that was meaningful for me, uh, just be able to gather again, um, kind of as a single guy, you, you don't, if, if the doors are shut, you're shut in kind of thing. So yeah. um, Manhattan Beach was amazing and impactful and um, a real good community growth area. And just to be able to go in as a community and as a church congregation, hang out there, that was really mm -hmm. a good, good event. Oh, and watching the bouncers at Carlisle Fun Days, like the amount of people that, that were out for that event. It was incredible. It was, I mean, it was a probably um, kind of relief again from COVID and being able to go out and, and uh, be able to meet people again and, and be together and as a community. And then to have our stuff there and being part of the community is one of the goals that we like again set the year before and, mm -hmm. and it's really having a lot. And we've been doing it a lot, a lot of community events and, and I think it's having um, a real impact on on our community because if we're we're not impacting our community why why are we here so yeah um so along with the, the community aspect of it um i think the really cool part i mean i think it's been more evident in the christmas season because it's so easy to make that connection right so we had dickens which is an absolute hit we have winterfest Generally a winter fest, like you said, we've had like three kids show up. Like, yeah. It felt like we had 300 kids show up this yeah. year. Like, well, there was over 50 names on the paper and I know three quarters of them did not even fill the paper in. So 
Right. Yeah. At points, I thought that bouncer was going to explode with the amount of children that were there. It was great. And it was great to watch the parents sit mm -hmm. and be together as a community and, and had a, a place for their kids to go and have fun and them to connect mm -hmm. yeah. as parents and, uh, and get some apple cider. That was mm -hmm. a big hit too. So yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool to be able to do that. And like in service in the park, we're doing so yeah. much that uh, I think as a church, one of the things that we often, the mistakes we often make is we tend to be confined to the four walls of, of the building. And um, the service in the park was an amazing event. Um, people coming that just actually saw that we we're having a service, heard the music and mm -hmm. yeah. came on over from, from the campers and yeah. joined us. And that, that sort of thing, it just was, Crazy as far like, and and crazy amazing kind yeah. of Yeah, yeah. I was saying I, I'd like to do that more like this summer. Just like if the weather is permitting, why not go up there and do it more regularly? Yeah. And, um, the big one that I was just reminded of, like in light of community. So it's the what is the twenty first today? Twenty second today? Twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty second today. So yesterday. Um, Carlisle did the big toy drive, and normally that is orchestrated by Cornerstone Family and Youth, but they weren't able to, to facilitate it. So we got to be a part of the toy drive yesterday, and there was so much stuff. Like, so our community's being awesome with all of the toys and their winter stuff, and, and but we got to offer our space and um, bring people in, and it was just, it's so awesome to be a part of that community-minded outside of our walls and he wasn't even like us driving it it was just us saying hey we have a building yeah, yeah. throw open the doors throw up as many tables as we need do whatever we need to do just to help others succeed right and absolutely no there's really no kickback for us right other than people get to know us get to yep. uh experience our hand in, in the community we become like you know we become integral in the, yeah. in the community and that's what we're called to do. Yeah. Like we really are supposed yeah. to live within the community we're serving and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and even like when we first were here, our vision was to see that building itself, like the U Center, that place on railway, sorry, um, to see that building being used for the town, right? Mm -hmm. Like we wanted to see people in there and now we have like the dance and then Mitch with him starting up the youth center again and branding it again, like kids are liking it, right? And so I don't know how many other youth outside of our normal kids or normal youth actually know about the place. So even just opening up the biz, like the building for the toy drive and for different things, people can actually go in and see what it's like mm -hmm. without the pressure of having to go on a youth night, right? So. Right. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. I mean, God works through all of it. Like it's, it's not like, um, it's by our actions, he will be known. And that's what we have to keep focused on and, yeah. and continue to push forward with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a good segue. Because we can't, can't do a year in review <laughs> without talking about the missing member at the table here. Um, so it was cool having Mitch here while we had him. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I, was, I was thinking about it, you know, obviously him leaving is not a highlight. That's not a good thing for us to, we're not celebrating him leaving, right? But it's not a low light either because it was a good thing. It was a transition that needed to happen. Right? And, and we wish them all the best and are excited for the new opportunities that they're having. And, uh, and keep praying for them through yeah. the transition, right? Because yeah. that, I know, you know, being young and married, it is wonderful to go to a place together and to build their family, right? And so continue to pray for Mitch and Morgan too in the process and their new little one that's on the way. And yep. yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. And, and we grow our family and the family move on and, yeah yeah but they're still family yeah. and that's the that's the nice part with yeah. with having people come and go we get to extend the one church family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out definitely and morgan was a huge hit with the kids helping me out with kids club i know starting that up 
It is very interesting <laughs> to talk about Bible stories with little kids and trying to like keep it kid <laughs> friendly, mm -hmm. but yet also getting the getting the message across, mm -hmm. right? And Morgan really did help me out a lot. Like I do miss yeah. her and I know even the kids miss having a little extra quality time with her. Mm -hmm. um, and even at youth when I started doing some more youth stuff, like the kids miss Mitch. He did really good things and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad and it's cool to see how the kids was nervous about that transition because you, you never know what happens because youth pastors are important to kids because that's what that's a person that they remember for their whole life right yeah. and so that transition we just really wanted to do it well and especially like me kind of taking it over like that was a huge <laughs> Something that I was very, very nervous about, but it went well because we yeah. talked about Mitch and just the highlights of what he did through the time that he was here with them. And there's lots of funny stories I'm hearing and it's good, good, yeah. good stories, right? Mm -hmm. But yet now we move on, right? So. Well, and yeah, and it's part of growing and changing as a, as a community too. Yeah. Things happen and we're proud of, of the work being done in the other building and mm -hmm. and the impaction we're having on those youth and and basically reaching out from there like yeah. these are, these are important people in our community and yeah. we're we're serving them so um, another thing when you mentioned the child the the kids club Wednesdays have been a massive thing for me I've really enjoyed them just having the um, when kid club is going on we are having um, a study in uh, a Bible study for the adults and growing is like that's another side of the community that we we're, we're building relationships within our own community so that we can be better equipped to to reach out to the community beyond and um, it has been challenging and um, possibly take 10 years to get through one book but <laughs> we're getting there but the, the conversation has been amazing and uplifting yeah. and um I'm so glad we picked us a nice light book of the Bible to start with. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. That's good. It won't take us to we, we got through chapter two, so it only took us four months to get through two chapters. So, you know, it's 16 chapters in Romans. It, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. So, and I told, I said, we're going to be able, we're going to get all the journals for all the New Testament and then I'm allowed to go. So, you know, at this rate, I'm not going anywhere for a really long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can save my kneecaps. I, I, yeah, I wasn't going to go there, but there, waiting for that. <laughs> there is a contract in place. Just so you know. Matt loses his kneecaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he ever moves. Yep. That's, that's the requirement. And I have the bat for it too. You know. Yeah. And even as as a, amongst the the people leading the congregations and stuff, we've done things like we've gone to pastor retreat, had our own mm -hmm. input into that, and mm -hmm. um, that was um, a really good experience. We've been on several. It's nice for us to get away, but mm -hmm. it's nice for us to grow in our own faith and, and to yeah. be with people that. They're also serving, and so yeah. that was a highlight for me as well. Um, just to be able to um, gather in a way that mm -hmm. and be less focused on others and, and working on our own selves. And yeah. the stuff that we took away and the things that we learned there was, I mean, that's that story of seven was one of the things that mm -hmm. that uh, came from that, and you don't realize it. What you're doing until you actually take time and break and stop and think what you've done and what what you actually accomplished. There's so much work to do. If you don't look back, mm -hmm. you never know what you've mm -hmm. done because totally. there's always someone else. There's always something else. Yeah. And totally. so, yeah, it was it was a good good time was, for us. Yeah. It was really nice and refreshing to hear even Shannon share her story about like ladies in ministry and being like it's not that you have to be submissive and that's that's our joke being married <laughs> is i always joke that i couldn't submit to my husband or couldn't yeah say the word couldn't say the word hey i'm saying it very well right now. i know like, that's good. <laughs> anyways but just hearing her story and how like we we 
we are our own people and like God has a calling on our lives too. And so that was just a nice refreshing time because even um, this transition from, you know, having a kid in school and me doing lots of, with the ladies at, to kind of taking a bit of a step back because there was a time where I got a little burnt out and just being like, what am I doing? But then the transition from having my kid go from a, um, our school here to homeschooling and seeing that, like we have a group now, I can't even, I can't even tell you how many people actually come out because it's very sporadic, but we have people from all different communities around Carlisle coming and it's wonderful to meet people of all different backgrounds, faith backgrounds, hearing stories and just talking and loving on each other is huge. And so for me, especially like the homeschool support group, I know that I've missed a few just with how busy we've been with Dickens and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But it's been so good just to hear from other people and also take a step back and let me just kind of figure out what I'm doing with homeschooling and, and teaching my kids. And um, yeah, like I really enjoy that we have our homeschool support group here. And Kim is doing a phenomenal job with just having it very low key, but yet also talking about struggles and also some encouraging and exciting things that are happening within our own families. Like that's been really helpful. Mm -hmm. So just loving. It, loving the it's a different season for sure but it's yeah. like it's a good season and yeah. it's crazy to see how god's hand like even that whole toy toy drive and how that all played out like i'm always there's times where it's like god are we doing the right thing and then all of a sudden god just puts another thing on our lap and it's just that affirmation of like we need yeah. to be for our community and we need to love on people so it's yeah. been cool that's yeah, been very cool yeah and we're also building internally as well the leadership's mm -hmm. working and focusing on what we need to do, the structures we need to be have in place and, and things we need to do so that we can service the community yeah. in a better way and help both for us as leadership to help you and, and Matt and and mm -hmm. how do we support you to, so that you can do the job that God's, God's called yeah. you to. And the things that happen that the regular congregation, the people who come to church don't necessarily know that we're, we're doing on a regular basis but yeah um, things that are we're getting into place to help things go along better um, both in the church and outside the church mm -hmm. yeah yeah and just even talking about those structures I think that's probably the biggest highlight is just Albanto you know yes I'm talking about an app and everyone's tired of me talking about apps I get that <laughs> but like to have this good. scheduling system up and running, like, you know, so Clay was, I was chatting with Clay on Sunday and I was joking with him. I was like, so how is it nice to not have to be here every Sunday to actually have the greeter team up and running? And he was like, yeah, it is actually kind of nice. Like it's weird for us because, you know, but it's nice to have different faces sitting there and, um, yeah. you know, you know, Clarence has stepped up and Steven has stepped up and, and they've done such good things there. And even in the booth to have, you know, we had Clay in there and- Even Tracy was helping out Yeah, Clay and Tracy Sunday, were in there. super helpful and, too. Yeah. And, you know, Clay is so excited about all the buttons he gets to push now. <laughs> and, and it's just like, you know, and, yeah. and even, the, even the worship stuff, right? To be able to have a system to share the songs, right? So people can mm. practice and listen to the songs. and. Yeah. Um, it's all those structures that not only set us up to grow, but also and protect us, but protect our volunteers, mm -hmm. right? So that we're not having someone there every single Sunday. And if they don't show up, we panic and we yeah. get stressed out because, you know, it's just, yeah. So there's, that's a big highlight for us. And no, it's not because it's an app. It's just because it's just... Yeah. Well, it's healthier. And we're putting structures in beyond that as well. Like, oh, yeah. And, and we're making um, strides in that. And, and being the lead in Red Brew is one of the things that we require and, um, because of our size is that we need some help from Carlisle. And the structure really goes a long way with us being able to get that help and scheduling them and being able to communicate in a way um, that we know that I can't ask so and so to come because they're already booked in and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, it's been um, beyond the app and like just putting all of yeah. the things in that we need to yeah. run yeah. effectively and grow. 
yeah. and get ready to grow. Yeah. Well, based on our numbers, growing for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it's been it's been a interesting year because you sometimes when you stop first sit down and think, what did we do this year? Yeah. Uh, and then you go, whoa, well, we did lots actually. Mm -hmm. actually yeah. Break it down. So. Yeah. We're we're also missing some key people that have moved on. Oh yeah. Right, like. Um, the Kinets and just how I was so glad that he shared his story because that story needs to especially nowadays like I'm it's hitting closer and closer to home it seems like with friends and family friends and stuff like that and so like even for him sharing before they moved on like that was a huge blessing to multiple people and with Karen she was a strong like I she was wisdom that was to me she was just so wise and I miss her so dearly but I'm also glad that God, we can, you know, we can have those times with people and let, help them, you know, move on to bigger and better things that God has for them, right? Yeah. So, and I've often, yeah. someone so, told me that, you know, churches are like staying by the river. As long as someone comes in, into the church mm. and then leaves in a better way, yeah. Yeah. then they're going on to help someone else down yeah. the river. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's... That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to equip yeah. us to be able to do what we need to do where we need to do it as God calls. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so keep things rolling. What are some things that we're looking forward to in the new year? So at the time of watching this, that is January <laughs> 1 right now. We've started the reading plan. So if you're not on the reading plan, which I'm, I, I, that's probably one of the things I'm excited about is to actually do a reading plan for the whole year with the church and to walk through the Bible with everybody and, um, you know, see who, uh, who sticks it out till the end. And, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, so that's, that's going to be exciting. And, um, but what else, what other things are we excited about? I think for, for me, my, like, I love, you know, doing events and I love putting on events. Um, like our fall festival, that was so much fun. Like I enjoyed that. And we had different people come out from the community but I also felt like we were also competing with the town in a sense where they would have stuff on and so my hope I guess for this year is to not just do our own thing but to be like hey how can we help for the town and so that's where I think for me a little bit of change is to just be like okay well if they're gonna put on an Easter thing or like an Easter egg hunt or whatever like instead of doing our own thing Let's just join them and mm -hmm. be the light in our community. And that's literally just, it doesn't, you don't have to speak to a lot of people. You just serve and help. Mm -hmm. And that shows God's love, right? And so that's, for me, is kind of something I'm looking forward to. And it's going to be different, and but it's going to be good, too. So Yeah, and same for me, being able to, um, I think we sort of, as a church, always kind of did it. But we did it in a way that... Um, maybe couldn't didn't reach as many people as we wanted or um, that we um, there's some barriers when it comes to faith and buildings mm -hmm. and what and so going out in the community and actually being very intentional about what we're doing ministry wise like we're a missions church mm -hmm. and our mission is just 10 feet out that door mm -hmm. so yeah. um, being able to be able to go yeah we're community we're small community so we're used to being part of a community yeah mm -hmm. but I am really excited with the fact that hey we're going to be a presence not just in our community we're gonna be a presence yeah. in our community so yeah yeah definitely I'm excited for um, you know we kind of talked about it earlier but the church is working together mm -hmm. right we have this really cool group of pastors in town right now that are just excited not that not just willing but actually excited to get involved and and to do things as a group the united front which carlisle hasn't seen a united front amongst the churches in a long time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we've kind of been building our own kingdoms and and now it's like let's let's focus on the kingdom and uh yeah. and, and the big thing is like we threw it out to the other churches about youth and saying hey we lost our youth pastor but we have this building it's not one of our churches it's neutral ground yeah. so let's take advantage of that and let's work together and all the pastors were just overwhelmingly like yep we're in let's let's yeah. do this um and recognize that they don't have a lot of young people but this is an opportunity to reach out and have an impact because each yeah. of those pastors 
it, <laughs> you look at our little group, there is a wide range of personalities. <laughs> so yep. each of us is going to connect with different youth differently. Yeah. And, and that's just the way God has designed it. Yeah. So, and, and youth is just one of many things that the group, you know, we, the group is not just, let's work together, but not like flesh it out, but they all have ideas, right? Mm -hmm. We want to do this, we want to do that. Yeah. So um, that's exciting to be dreaming bigger, so. Yeah. Yeah, and to do things differently. Like yep. we have, you don't do it intentionally, you don't become, you don't do the same thing all the time. But as leadership and at council level, it's like we are planning to do what is needed, not what we've always done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be actually going, okay, what did we do? What went well? What didn't go well? How can we get it better? How can we work with other people, yeah. organizations? Because that's, we may not, we may not trigger as someone drives by the, by the building, but if we're side by side with them at their event, yeah. or we are doing things differently that we've never done before, um, it just has that greater impaction mm -hmm. and yeah. sometimes it's hard but sometimes you have to go yeah you know what just because we've always done it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do yeah 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 is there anything else we're looking forward to in the new year uh, it's just, like, to me, I guess, like, I'm overwhelmed right now just because of how God continues to just put things, like, yes, we ask for God to move, and yes, we ask God to open doors that we would like to open, but it's just funny, it just amazes me every time when I hit, like, a point of, like, okay, hey, God, like, where are we on the right track? And God just continues to open doors. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen this next year and see how, um, like, even with the youth, like, they, youth is, from when we were doing youth yeah. till now, is completely different. So, like, I'm being stretched in a way where I'm like, okay, like, this is not, this is not youth from whenever the last time we did youth. I can't even remember. It was a while back. It's been but a while, yeah. Just to, and, but also to see them just being open to talk mm -hmm. and they just, they just want to talk. And, and so that was really cool. So I'm, I'm also growing to in, in myself is like, just be open with them, right? Mm -hmm. Like be open, be God's vessel and just love on them. And so I'm, I'm excited to see where youth goes, where kids go, like even the chats that I have with the kids during whatever we're talking whatever character we're on for making the bible come alive like i'm it's it's really funny to hear them kind of ask questions and like why is this happening or um so that's and also just to get more volunteers out right because mm -hmm. like there are definitely gaps and i can't like as much as i love serving and i love to be where I can just pick things up and help out. I we do need more volunteers, and so okay. seeing more people step up and worship and kids and red verse and youth and wherever else that we need, um, mm -hmm. it's exciting though. It's a, it's very exciting. Yeah, and <clears throat> as human beings, we have a tendency not to. If someone's doing a good job, it's like we want to stand there and pat them on the back. Yeah, and doing things differently. We're now asking, hey. Am I doing this all the time? Make you not w yeah. yeah want to help out yeah or that you want to help out and we just are in the way and you don't want to interfere and it's like no 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 we want to grow we want to grow all the groups and organizations yeah. and I'm excited for actually putting some some solid feet under some of the programming that we want to look at mm -hmm. we're going to evaluate all of the different things that we do and mm -hmm. um, why we do it and then go okay what are we going to try. And yeah. so um, that's, that's very exciting from our point. When you wipe the slate clean, it's, it's scary, but it's yeah. mm -hmm. scary in a good way. Yeah. 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 That's all I got. <laughs> so, I think, so maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I often do not share until it's like the last minute because I don't want to like, <laughs> 
over promise under deliver has always been one of the things Darren and I have talked about this a little bit that <laughs> he's so eager to share all the cool things that we're doing <laughs> and I'm like ah! <laughs> like let's hold back just in case um so I'm gonna step out I'm gonna be a little bit different I'm gonna do a podcast this year Ooh, nice. I, I think it's gonna be fun I have been nice. dreaming I have been thinking about some of the things that I want to do and uh, um guests I want to have, just different perspectives and different, um, anyways, I think I'm going to do it. I think we're, we're, we're going to do it. I think you're going to, because yeah. <laughs> Now you told Darren, yeah. so he's well, going to make not sure. Not just Darren, I'm now I've announced yeah. to the whole yeah. shirt. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, and then I'll go out and limb and say I'm going to get my credentials this year. Ooh. Oh. So there, there you go. We're going to uh, do this together. There we go. Yeah. So we're going to do big things in store, big things coming. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and there's, we may be not sharing a lot. There's lots of things that we're talking about and thinking about. And, um, you know, we filled out three bristle boards as the pastor's council of things that we want to do and how we want to get it done. So like, there's lots of things that we want to accomplish this year. Yeah. There's some direction. So, uh, it's exciting. Um, so yeah, as we wrap up. I just want to let everybody know you guys have a good week. The office is still closed this week. We'll be back on the 8th. Uh, we're kicking off a brand new series on the 8th. Um, and it's just going to be B. We're going to go through the Sermon on the Mount and look at all of these B statements that uh, Jesus goes through. We're going to be here for a while because Jesus has packed a lot into that little sermon. And so uh, you want to get ready, go through Matthew 5 through seven are the chapters we're going to be looking at uh, like i said the reading plan has started today so if you're not on there uh well, the link will be popping up here right away but uh thanks for tuning in um it's so fun to look back and look ahead and uh thank you guys for being a part of it this is fun um so i'm just gonna pray and uh we'll we'll wrap it up uh